What happens when a narcissist realizes not only that they've lost you, but moreover, that it's actually entirely their loss? That's what I'm covering today. You don't want to miss this. Let's do it. Hi friends, welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Tammy M. Joyce. I'm the founder of Tammy M. Coaching and I run a powerful eight week transformational coaching program called the Freedom Class, specific to healing and recovery from codependency and narcissistic abuse. If you'd like to learn more about the possibility of becoming a coaching client, there's a link in the description below this video where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. So let's get into it. What can you expect when a narcissist realizes what they've lost by losing you? Well, a few things really. Not least of which being the desire factor will likely go through the roof. Narcissists always want what they can't have. If it's out of reach, the desire factor is only going to go up for the narcissist. Why? Well, because the forbidden fruit effect is a very real thing. Now, naturally, to some degree, it's human nature to want something more when it's off limits or more challenging to get. But because of the gaping hole in their soul, people with a destructive narcissist personality pattern take this forbidden fruit effect to a whole other level. In addition, narcissists spend a lot of time in fantasy, sometimes to the point of being delusional, in particular in relation to themselves, their own worth, gifts, and talents which is why they so often show up with a shocking sense of superiority and entitlement. When they realize you're gone for real and for good, and now they have to deal with themselves and the void left behind in your absence, believe me when I tell you, they are going to feel that void in a very big way. And in that void, they long for the one that got away. The reality is narcissists don't tend to go after riffraff. You can be sure that if you've been pursued by a destructive narcissist for more than a mere one night stand, it's because you bring a lot of good stuff to the table of the relationship. You're someone who makes them look good by osmosis. And that's any relationship, by the way, not just romantic. So with that in mind, when the narcissist is faced with the reality of what they've lost in losing you, you can expect them to begin using hoovering tactics in an attempt to suck you back into the abuse cycle. In fact, you can count on this happening. And if you want to learn more about narcissistic hoovering, and more importantly, what to do about it, how to handle it, you can watch this video here. Being prepared in advance is the thing that is going to save you a whole world of pain, drama, and trauma when the time comes. And here's the thing, friends. There's no time limit on the narcissistic hoover. I've personally experienced a number of hoovering attempts after a decade or more of cold, hard, no contact with various destructive narcissists from my past. These folks can be relentless. So when this happens, don't be flattered. This has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them looking to get their own sick needs met through you and at your expense, nothing more. Once they have you back where they want you and the forbidden fruit effect has worn off, you can expect to be served another round of the toxic abuse cycle, which if you're not clear what that means, the narcissistic abuse cycle runs in three phases, the idealization phase, the devalue phase, and then of course the discard with a whole lot of projection, gaslighting, lying and deceiving along the way. And all of this starts with a healthy dose of love bombing. Love bombing, otherwise known as the idealization phase, is where we begin the narcissistic abuse cycle, either for the first time or all over again, if for any reason, there's been some time and distance. So be clear, this is what's happening. You're being sucked right back into the toxic abuse cycle where you're being idealized before being devalued and then ultimately discarded again. That's the cycle that you're going to be running. And many of you are already familiar with this cycle because it's a pattern you've been living in your romantic lives, as well as with friends, family, and at work. It's not only sick, it's really, really painful. In particular, for those of us who are highly empathic and show up with the best of intent with these individuals who couldn't care less about our feelings, our well-being, or what's in our best interest. What happens if they can get a toe in the door is suddenly they begin to morph into that person you needed them to be to begin with. 
back when you were being abused before you went no contact out of sheer self-preservation. Now all of a sudden, they're on their best behavior and they're doing all the right things and they're saying all the right things and suddenly they know how to apologize. Suddenly they can show up on time and be decent, kind and respectful and show you how much they really care and how very, very sorry they are. And they're making all kinds of empty promises in the hopes that you'll be naive enough to fall for the dog and pony show they've got going on. And the reality is, this is all very temporary. Their best behavior will be a very short-lived phase. If the stakes are real high, you might be able to get a few months of consistent best behavior out of them, but in no time, that mask is gonna start to slip. In no time, you're going to enter the devalue phase where you become the target again. In no time, they're going to be blame shifting and projecting all of their own disowned neurosis and psychosis all over you. So understand that if you've allowed that to happen, if you have not maintained firm, non-negotiable and unapologetic no contact while also having gotten into your own healing and recovery work and they've gotten a foot in the door, and now you're standing there and you're on the receiving end of all of this love bombing, the whole cycle has just started over again. And when you realize that it's time to run for the hills again, make no mistake, you will be starting from ground zero. Doesn't get easier over time. In fact, it only gets worse. Our self-esteem takes a bigger hit next time around. It becomes more embarrassing, more painful, more traumatic. The consequences emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, physically, and financially get worse and more grave with each relapse on the destructive relationship. So think long and hard before you decide to start falling for their words and the sudden shift into this whole new person who wasn't able to show up for you before, but suddenly now they're more motivated for whatever reason. Think long and hard before you start falling for any of the nonsense because chances are very high, extremely high in fact, that there's nothing but more pain and trauma coming your way. It's just a question of time. Now comment below and let me know whether or not you've had this experience. Let me know in the comments section below. Also, if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of working with me in one of my coaching programs, there's a link in the description below where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. This is for you if you're ready and able to invest in yourself and your healing and recovery journey. If you want the pain to stop, you want to find a way out of the fog, confusion, self-doubt, fear, and anxiety brought on by having been exposed to empathy-impaired emotional manipulators who feel entitled to hurt you, and worse yet, blame you for the hurt they cause. If that's you, the link is in the description below this video. Now, assuming that all attempts to hoover and love bomb and suck you back in and exploit you at your weakest and most vulnerable have failed, because you're neither weak nor vulnerable, rather, you've taken excellent care of yourself. You've not only established no contact, but you are going to the next level. You're doing your own personal healing and recovery work. All of your time, energy, attention, and resources are focused on yourself, learning to love yourself, learning how to heal yourself, learning how to take excellent care of yourself, learning how to live your best life as your best self. And as a result, you've maintained no contact and all their tactics, games, and strategies have failed miserably. What will happen next is they'll send in the flying monkeys and little minions. That's right, incoming. Meddling friends, neighbors, family members, and sometimes even coworkers. People who do not have the wisdom to mind their own business. People who lack boundaries. People who are in possession of half the story and a very distorted half at that, but they think they have all the information. People who want you to believe that they mean well while offering their unsolicited advice from a very narrow perspective, and again, a distorted perspective. And the truth is, sometimes these people are well-meaning, naive and brainwashed as they may be. But let's be honest, more often than not, if they've aligned with the narcissist and are delivering their messages like little errand boys and girls, these people are anything but well-meaning. They too have an agenda. 
and it likely has nothing to do with your best interest. So beware of the flying monkeys and meddling little minions. They, by the way, are a great place to start practicing setting healthy limits and boundaries. Now with that said, when all of these tactics fail to impress, what's next? Well, tall tales, fairy tales, and false images, my friends. Listen, hear me. Narcissistic people do not walk off into the sunset and live happily ever after with anyone. Forget what you see on social media, what you hear through the grapevine, it's all an illusion, all of it. If they didn't have it to give you, they aren't suddenly going to grow a heart and a conscience and morph into the person who has it to give someone else. And by it, I mean showing up in a relationship like a kind and decent human being with a heart and a soul, with genuine empathy and a moral compass, with healthy love to give. If they didn't have it to give you, I promise you, they aren't suddenly going to have it to give to whoever is unfortunate enough to be their next source of supply. So stop hurting yourself with the notion that someone else is getting the love that you didn't. Stop torturing yourself. Block the mother effort. Do your healing and recovery work and start loving yourself instead. Now with all of that said, what you can expect next is a full-blown smear campaign. True story. If you hold the line, stand firm, and refuse to give in to their hoovering tactics, flying monkeys and little minions, even though they know full well they've blown what is likely to be the best thing that has ever happened or will ever happen to them, still they will smear you. Why? Because narcissists are bitter, resentful little cowards. And no matter how appallingly they themselves have behaved, they will have to land on either the hero or the victim side of the story. And as such, they'll cast you as the big bad villain to their victim. So know this in advance and brace yourself. They really are this kind of predictable, frankly, because it's all they've got. They can't get through to you, they can't use you, manipulate you, target you, exploit you anymore. They can't even access you because you're doing all the right things. So now they're going to go after your character and your reputation and any relationship you have with others that they have influence over. And they'll say whatever it takes, no matter how untrue, how cruel, how unkind or bizarre. No matter what it takes, they will work to assassinate and annihilate your character and again your reputation to anyone who will listen. And this can be very painful for those of us who have been on the receiving end of a smear campaign, in particular in the early stages of our healing and recovery journey. It's not easy to have to endure this, that is for sure. And this is where doing the real work of healing and recovery and having a solid support system around us can be so vital. We can get to the place where we're pretty freaking bulletproof, but it takes some work. And here's the thing. When the narcissist can no longer control you, access you, target you, manipulate you, they will work to manipulate everyone's perception of you. They'll work to manipulate how everybody sees you, what they think of you, how they feel about you. And I got to tell you, our job is to get to the place where we can rise above that and be absolutely non-effective. And I've walked that path in many areas of my life, not least of which with my sick family of origin. The kind of projection that these folks are capable of, I've dealt with it in my professional life, I've dealt with it romantically, and I've dealt with it with so-called friends as well as family. When they can no longer control you, manipulate you, exploit you, affect you, siphon your vital life force energy, target you directly, they will work overtime to smear and assassinate your character. The reality is, this is the game they play. And I get it. It's daunting, perhaps, to conceive of the fact that this is what I'm going to have to be on the receiving end of. But I say better that you know in advance what to expect. Expect the worst case scenario and do your work. Do what you need to do to take care of yourself and protect yourself. In doing so, you'll be less likely to be taken out by whatever it is the narcissist has to say, no matter who believes the bullshit. And last but not least, when the narcissist realizes what they've lost and that you aren't coming back for more, they will seek revenge. Somehow, some way, they'll find a way. If you've unfortunately put yourself in a position where these folks have any leverage or power over you in any way whatsoever, other than just being able to verbally assassinate your character and smear your reputation to whomever will listen, 
If they have any power or leverage over you at all, again, if you have put yourself in the unfortunate position where they can actually come after you in any way in an attempt to seek revenge, when they realize that they can't get through to you any other way, chances are good that they will look for opportunities to get even. I mean, how dare you draw a line in the sand and say no more, right? No more abuse, no more bullying, no more lying, no more projecting, no more blame shifting, no more dirty little secrets or dirty big secrets, no more insults, no more criticism, no more deception, manipulation or triangulation. How dare you say no more to all the crazy making insanity that they bring to the table? So if they have the opportunity and they know that they can't get anywhere with regards to breaking through that barrier of no contact that you firmly established and aren't going back on, it's game over, we're done. If they can seek revenge, they're going to do that. So know that in advance and do whatever you need to do to take away any leverage they might have, to take away that power and to protect yourself and anyone else in your care from their attempts to seek revenge and do it in advance. Get ahead of them in every possible way and stay there. In the end, you'll be glad you did. And with that, I'm going to call it a wrap, but don't stop now. I have well over a hundred more videos right here on YouTube for you to watch to help you better understand the detrimental effects of narcissistic abuse. And more importantly, learn what you need to do now to heal from the abuse. So you can start living your best life in peace, confidence, abundance, and freedom. And if you want to go deeper with me, you can go to TammyMCoaching.com and learn about my unique tried and true process garnered over decades of experience and learn how you can become my client.